Bloodborne Pathogens. Lesson Objectives Define Bloodborne Pathogens. Identify workers who are at risk of exposure to bloodborne pathogens. Identify key aspects of a bloodborne pathogen exposure control plan. Describe methods for controlling exposure to bloodborne pathogens. Describe steps to take when exposed to a bloodborne pathogen. Bloodborne pathogens. What are bloodborne pathogens? They are pathogenic microorganisms present in human blood that can lead to diseases. Examples of primary concern, hepatitis B or HBV, hepatitis C, HCV, human immunodeficiency virus, HIV. Hepatitis B, HBV, over 12 million Americans are infected, one in 20. Silent infection, symptoms include jaundice, fatigue, abdominal pain, loss of appetite, intermittent nausea, vomiting, and may lead to chronic liver disease liver cancer, and death. HBV can survive for at least one week in dried blood. Up to 40,000 people in the U.S. will become newly infected each year. Hepatitis C, HCV. Hepatitis C is the most common chronic bloodborne infection in the United States. Symptoms include jaundice, fatigue, abdominal pain, loss of appetite, intermittent nausea, and vomiting. May lead to chronic liver disease and death. HIV. HIV is the virus that leads to AIDS. HIV affects the body's immune system. HIV does not survive well outside the body. Estimated 1.1 million people living with HIV infected for life. Other bloodborne diseases. Caused by viruses or bacteria, they circulate in the blood at some phase and are capable of being transmitted. Most are rare in the United States. Examples are the Zika virus and Ebola virus. These are other examples of bloodborne pathogens. Risk of exposure. Contaminated sources, blood, other potentially infectious materials, or OPIM, human body fluids, any unfixed tissue or organ from humans, cultures, culture mediums, or other solutions, experimental animal blood, tissues, or organs infected with HIV or HBV. Risk of exposure. Spread of bloodborne pathogens occur through direct contact, indirect contact, respiratory transmission, or vector borne transmission. How exposure occurs needle sticks, cuts from other contaminated sharps, contact of mucous membrane or broken skin with contaminated blood or OPIMs. Occupational exposures. Occupations at risk, first responders, housekeeping personnel in some industries, nurses, and other healthcare personnel. CDC estimates 5.6 million workers in healthcare and related occupations are at risk. All occupational exposure to blood or OPIMs places workers at risk. Exposure Control Plan, ECP. Establish an exposure control plan. It's a written plan, it's reviewed and updated regularly. This is located in Quick Links and Forms. Observe standard precautions such as treating all blood and bodily fluids as if they are contaminated. Proper cleanup and decontamination. Engineering and work practice controls. Safer medical devices like safety needles, sharps disposable containers, and hand hygiene. Controlling exposure PPE examples, gloves, masks, aprons, smocks, gowns, face shields, mouthpieces, safety glasses, CPR pocket masks. Employers' responsibilities, perform hazard assessments, identify and provide appropriate PPE to employees at no cost, train employees on use and care, maintain and replace PPE, review, update, and evaluate PPE program. PPE selection, safe design and construction, fit comfortably, required PPE training, when it is necessary, what kind is necessary, proper donning, adjusting, wearing, and taking off. Limitations, proper care, maintenance, useful life, and disposal. Employees' responsibilities, 
properly wear PPE, attend training, care for, clean, and maintain, notify when repairs replacements are needed. Housekeeping, written schedules for cleaning and decontamination, picking up broken glass, not picked up by hands, mechanical means only, always use a broom and a dustpan. Cleanup and decontamination. Wear protective gloves, use appropriate disinfectant, clean and disinfect contaminated equipment and work surfaces. Thoroughly wash up immediately after exposure. Properly dispose of contaminated PPE, towels, rags, etc. Regulated waste disposal. Disposal of regulated waste in closable, leak-proof red or biohazard labeled bags or containers. Dispose of contaminated sharps in closable, puncture-resistant, leak-proof containers. Laundry. Contaminated laundry must be bagged or containerized at the location where it was used. Hepatitis B vaccines. They're offered to all potentially exposed employees, provided at no cost to employees, within 10 days to employees with occupational exposure. If you do not wish to have the vaccination, you must sign a declination form. No vaccines are available for hepatitis C or HIV. When exposure occurs, exposure incident, specific eye, mouth, or other mucous membrane, non-intact skin, parenteral contact with blood or OPIMs that result from the performance of an employee's duties. Immediate actions. Wash exposed area with soap and water. Flush splashes to nose, mouth, or skin with water. Irrigate eyes with water and saline. Report exposure immediately. Direct employee to the healthcare professional for treatment. Confidential medical evaluation and follow-up. Routes of exposure and circumstances. When exposure occurs, Confidential medical evaluation and follow-up occurs. Route of exposure and circumstances, source individual, collect test blood for HBB and HIV serological status, post-exposure prophylaxis when medically indicated, counseling and evaluation. What questions do you have?